Hello, my name is Larry Martin and I'm a senior architect with Beyond 20. Uh, today I want to create a video for you responding to a request we got on our YouTube channel. Um, an individual asked if there was a way to export the grid via one step. Well, I'm going to caveat this with saying no, there is not a way to export the grid well with a one step, but we can emulate doing so. Some of the concerns with this are that with uh, some of our fields, especially like a description field that's rich text, etc. If we're trying to emulate exporting the grid, we're not going to get those rich text elements. So we are going to lose some formatting and screenshots and things of that nature when we do this. The proper way to handle this would be to actually create a report with the fields that we need and then run that report. But uh, in this case, the individual uh, definitively did not want to do a report. So we're going to emulate exporting the grid, which would normally occur by having a grid and then going through your file uh, export grid functionality um, within the system. Uh, we do have another video to show you how to do that. So if that's a desire, then you would be able to watch that video. Instead, I'm going to show you how to go about um, emulating exporting the grid but keeping in mind we're going to lose any formatting we're going to lose our rich text fields any screenshots or images all right so let's just step right into it so i can do all of this in the rich client uh go up to our one steps one step manager i've already built the one step and tested it out and validated it uh so we're going to go ahead and edit it <clears throat> be aware that we do have a pre-step. The reason we have the pre-step is that we need to create column headers in our CSV file. So we don't want to create those column headers every time we add a new incident. In this case, I'm using incident, but you can uh, rebuild this one step in any context. So I do have a pre-step so that we do a single file create and write. So all we're doing here is we're writing to a file you can see that I'm using my um, desktop and I'm just calling it incident CSV. And all I'm doing is writing out incident ID, comma, description, comma, call source. So when uh, we double click on our .csv file, those will be the three column headings. Um, important to note, we're doing plain text. And in this pre-step, I do want to overwrite the existing file. That way I can just run this one step whenever I need to. And then I want to make sure the file is written before the next sub-step. Uh, one other note once we get into our steps here is I am running this against a search group. And in this case, I'm saying all incidents. You can modify this for your needs. So if you need to say, you know, all incidents in the past seven days, uh, if you're doing change requests, you can say all changes in the last seven days, etc. So I just said all instance because I'm in a demo system that has uh, just the demo data are. Uh, so there are 81 incidents, so no big deal there. All right, our next thing is, uh, again, I'm writing to a file and I'm going to my desktop and same name as I have over here. I need to make sure that I'm writing to the same file. So in my steps... I've got my file location, and then I have got my incident ID, comma, quote, incident description, quote, comma, incident call source, and removed all spacing between those commas because we are dealing with a CSV file. Again, we're going with plain text. We want to make sure it's written before the next sub-step. We do not want to overwrite on this second uh, right to file. We only do the overwrite in the pre-steps. Now, one other thing about this is since my incident description field could have commas inside of it and or line breaks and carriage returns and other um, scenarios, we need to do some escaping here. So what we've done is we've enclosed incident description in double quotes and we've added three modifiers 
and I have got an error there. So let me see if I can uh, cancel out of here and open that back up and see if we can see those modifiers. All right. So apologize for that little glitch. Um, share well just sometimes uh, the tokens get out of whack. So just closing it and reopening it brought it back. So my modifiers on the incident description, because it is a large text field, rich text field, etc., is I need to remove any line breaks. So there is an actual modifier for that. I need to remove carriage returns. So those modifiers are just here. So I can remove line breaks, remove carriage returns, etc. And then I need to replace any double quotes within that text file with single quotes because otherwise we're going to be overriding those with different um, with a different data whenever I open it up in a CSV format it's just not going to work right so with our remove line breaks remove carriage returns and replace the double quote with a single quote we're going to get the the, res the best results we can without actually creating a report all right so if I could just go ahead and okay this I'm going to run that one step we're creating our incidents.csv file, and I will open my um, file folder on the other side just because I have other files I don't want to share on the internet, silly things like that. And then whenever I open that file, here is the result. So I have my incident ID column with the incident IDs. I have my description column with my incident description. And I have my call source. Those are the three fields that I selected in my one step. And like I said, you can take the one step and extend it out to however many uh, columns you want. Just make sure that for any large text, or I'm sorry, any large fields or rich text fields, you just make sure that in your one step, in your right to file, that for each of those, you just enclose them in double quotes and add those three modifiers. Anyhow, I hope you find this video of use. Um, hopefully you can use this to make your life easier. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We do produce videos on a regular basis for you guys, so uh, you'll be able to see what's coming. Um, and if you have a question about how to do something in ShareWell, drop us a line, send us an email, etc., and we will respond sometimes with a video. Thank you.